also Liberty Lens. <laughs> Our tour guide for the site. Thank you, everyone. Yay. Take it away. So, uh, in a minute, David Elliott with Pennsylvania Horticultural Society is going to take you down and show you our special green infrastructure part. We're going to give, quick, give you a quick introduction to Liberty Lands. Uh, we are a two-acre privately owned park. We were built, we're maintained by our neighborhood, by essentially the Northern Liberties Neighbors Association. And we are on a brownfield site. We're an EPA brownfields to greenfield poster project. This two acre site was the location of the Burke Brothers Tannery, which was the site of a super fun PCB cleanup in the late 80s. And then the tannery buildings were donated to our neighborhood association with plans to use it to redevelop the buildings into senior housing. But because there had been a fire on the site, the entire tannery was demolished about 45 minutes yeah. after we took title to the property. Oh. And uh, it, it was really as much as 10 days, but it was very quick. And when we took title to the property, we didn't realize we were also taking title to about a quarter million dollars worth of tax liens that were on the property. So we ended up with two acres of vacant land with three quarters of a million dollars of total liens on it and decided that since we were going to lose the property anyway and couldn't do anything with it, we might as well make it pro pretty during the many years that it would undoubtedly take for the city to take it back from us. And some of us, two of whom are standing here, knew in our hearts of hearts that if you made something really pretty and into a park, it would be hard for the city to take it back. <laughs> so we found a little funding through the urban renewal programs, uh, planted 60 trees and some rose bushes and started a community garden and just started calling it a park and pretty quickly managed to convince people in our neighborhood, we didn't have a park at the time, that it was a park and once we started using it that way, we both kept building more things like the playground in the park, like more trees, other garden structures and convinced the city to forgive us the liens. So we own the property free and clear. We've been here since 1996 and we grow all the time. We have a little clump of volunteers who do the majority of the work and a few people that we pay a tiny amount of money. You'll see Andrew who we pay a pittance to take out the trash and do things like that and we run a park of our own. <laughs> And then David will show you the... Uh... So there's a little background into what we're going to see. Um, with the water apartment, we were asked to um, try to install some demonstration projects for best management practices regarding stormwater management. So we looked around to get some sites and this became pretty apparent as a good site because of our relationship with, um, with the neighborhood and the, those that had created the park. So um, we'll walk down to the low end of the site. Um, initially we did a master plan for the whole site, kind of showing opportunities where we could um, do some intervention in terms of capturing stormwater and playing with stormwater and being creative with it. And through that master planning process we come up with phase one, which is what we constructed. And then there was a phase one B, which we'll talk about when we get down there. But let's go to the low part of the site, which is where we initially started our phase one.